Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, happy Tuesday, the 16th of March, as we continue to cruise through the 2021 year so far. I uh, hope everybody had a good night last night. Uh, much love to Rashawn Holmes for the big night that he was able to give out. He was fantastic, so he's going to be on my good side for the next three to four years after that one. Um, let's get in today, though, my friend. He was incredible. Um, so, yeah, hopefully we get another one like that tonight. All right. Here we go, guys. Uh, today's show is brought to you by our good friends over at Jazz Sportsbook. You can get to the website. It is www.jazzsports.ag. We're gonna do a little. Uh, we're gonna do a video later for the public talking about sports betting. Um, we've been talking about them for a while now, guys. Our promo code over there is Five Pack. On top of all of the deposit bonuses that they will give you. If you sign up and make a deposit and use the promo code five pack, try doing your sports betting over there instead of where you currently do it. I will get you a free five pack membership to boot. Screenshot it, hit me up and show it to me. I just need to know it. That way I can hook you up. Length of the membership will depend on what kind of deposit you put in there. If you got any questions, feel free to reach out. Again, the promo code is five pack. Uh, they've been in business for over 20 years, low rollover bonus, same day payouts, 150% free play bonus, several different payout options, a lot of good things over there. Hit me up if you make that deposit today, guys. Let's rock and roll, and we will talk some sports betting later. Let's get it, bro. All right, day passes are up on the website. Subscribe to the station if you're new to it. Let's start out with Cash Game Lock. Uh, let's take kind of a, an easy piece of low-hanging fruit today, and that is the 3.6K Starting point guard of the Chicago Bulls, Tomas Sadoransky. He played well in his first game as a starter, 10 x He's a very capable DFS player. He's in a good matchup with the OKC Thunder. I'm assuming he'll see plenty of love today. Uh, kind of a starting point for me. I was a. It took me a little bit of the last slate he was on to decide I wanted to go, you know, all in on him. Did. He succeeded. He succeeded in most people's lineups, so it was nothing new. I expect him to be chalk again today. Yeah, I mean, he should be chalk. He deserves to be chalk. I think you just plug him in and move on in all formats. He's a starting point guard for 3,600. If he has another game like he did last time out, he'll probably be, he'll probably be closer to 5K next slate. And he deserves that price tag with being the new starting point guard for the Bulls. He's too cheap at under 4K. I think you just lock him in, like I said, and move on and call it a day and worry about your seven other spots. I was going to say, my guess is like when it all's said and done, Assuming he's the starter for the rest of the year. I think he'll be about a 5K guy and average about 25 yeah. points again. So you're getting a big time, you know, price discount on that. And uh, while it might not seem like it right now because he's not 5K right now, like in a week, uh, you'll definitely notice it. Yeah. And if you haven't watched a ton of NBA the last couple of years, he's not a scrub. Shadaransky can play. He's an all right player. For sure. All right. Next up, Moses Brown. So you want to talk about him for GPPs, but I want to say that I have a soft spot for him because his name is Moses. And I want to say thank you to my mom because my dad actually wanted to name me Moses when I was born because Moses Malone was starting to be like the new thing in the NBA. So every day I should thank my mom that my dad didn't get his way on that one. Well, I, he's like the opposite of, he has the opposite of a soft spot for me because early in the year I didn't hard recommend him, but I kind of threw him out there as a potential, you know, tournament play not even realizing he had gotten called down to the G League. So I always have a little bit of trouble recommending Moses Brown. That being said, you mentioned him like a couple months ago when he got his first taste of action and you were like, man, this guy's putting up DFS points and, you know, small and really small stretches. He's not playing big minutes, but anytime he gets out there, he's putting up DFS points. And we've seen that the past three games, he's got 20 plus. He's playing decent minutes. I feel like Sadoransky and... Moses Brown kind of fit together. We both like them. It sounds like we'll both just lock them in in both formats. Yeah, Al Horford's out again tonight for, you know, I'm doing the air quotes thing. If you can't tell, rest, because, you know, that makes sense. Uh, this guy does walk into DFS points. Not quite Robert Williams status, but that type of player is when he's out there, he puts up points. Hopefully he can stay out of foul trouble tonight. He got into quick foul trouble last game, had it perpetually throughout the game. So you might have actually seen a few more minutes if that wasn't the issue. He fouled out. Uh, still no Baisley, so they are limited at big man options. OKC, let's face it, they're tanking. Uh, Shy would play every day if they weren't tanking, and he doesn't. They want to see what they have with Moses Brown. They already know what you have with a Moose Scala and stuff like that, so they're just checking this guy out. For sure. All right, next up, speaking of guys that walk into DFS points, check out K.J. Martin Jr. 
of the Houston Rockets. So this might be the last game of him being a thing for a while. And what I mean by that is when he plays well again tonight, his price is probably going to go up. And then we could get Christian Wood back as soon as the next slate. He is doubtful tonight. I guess it's actually technically possible Christian Wood plays tonight. And if that's the case, I wouldn't like KJ Martin nearly as much. But there's still no John Wall. There's no Eric Gordon. Houston is another team with legitimately nothing to play for. So you might as well check out your young players. We know P.J. Tucker is away from the team. So they just don't have a lot of options. They don't even have Karooks and guys like that. He's in a good matchup with Atlanta tonight. And yes, to answer a question I asked last time out, because he was a hard recommend last game again. And somebody said, well, he's coming off the bench. Well, he has been coming off the bench. That's not anything different. We're totally fine with that. Yeah, totally fine with him coming off the bench. This guy looks like a cog in the machine type. You mentioned it. He walks into DFS points. And I love your point. We didn't even talk about this on the members only video. This might very well be the last time he's like wildly in play because his price will probably go up. And with Wood presumably coming back, he won't just won't be in play anymore. Uh, love that. Love going right back here. Uh, you know, we've talked about him on a couple of slates now. He's a guy that, you know, does what DK rewards. And at 5,300, he's rock solid with a nice upside. Yeah, he puts up points in a hurry when he's out there. And the thing is, even if he wasn't good tonight, his price might still go up. You saw it, Porter was terrible last time out, and his price still skyrocketed. Agreed. All right, moving on down the list. Let's talk about our long shots of the day. I want to talk about Matisse Thibel of the Philadelphia 76ers. So he's a long shot, especially in the sense that I can't picture a lot of people rostering him today with all the value out there. And we already talked about two of those pieces who should both get significantly more love than him. Here's another cheap guy that maybe you could get, um, you know, on the down low, not a guy that's going to get a lot of love because he's just not needed today. Right now he's shooting the three ball with confidence. You know, he's not a great offensive player, but he's five for his last five from three. When you are a defensive stopper and a theft artist, uh, he is to steals what Sunway sandwich employees are to making sandwiches, just a flat out artist of this situation. Uh, I like the idea of him getting a bunch more steals tonight. I know he's got a bunch recently. And you got a New York team that played a long, hard fought game last night. They've had, you know, point guards in and out of the lineup. I'm going to mark it down. Check out Matisse Stiebel for a minimum of two steals tonight. It's what he does really, really well. And he's actually playing well on the offensive side of things. Uh, I think he'll be solid today. But this is just trying to be a little bit different with some of the cheap guys because there's so many like easy value plays out there that he's just not needed. For sure. It's really hard to get there over a guy like Sadoransky, Moses Brown. But that just means his ownership is going to be really low. And there's nothing to say you can't use a couple of those value guys if you like the the studs. I'm over here giggling at myself because you're, you're calling Matisse Thibel an artist. And I'm over here thinking about the old artist, Matisse. Ah, uh, okay. Not what I was thinking. I was just thinking, man, this guy is a theft artist, but I, I see what you're doing there. Yeah. So a little Freudian slip and I get that call all day. All right. Next up, Trey Young. So I don't think like he's, we know who Trey Young is, right? He's not a long shot to give you good points, but as we broke down the slate, I think we both kind of came to the same conclusion. It's early in the day. So a lot of ownership projections aren't out there, but I don't think he gets a ton of love. Like I, I think he's more of like a 10% guy today. Yeah, this isn't like a long shot in the sense like no one's going to be looking here. No one knows who he is. It's Trey Young. He's one of the better players on the slate. But with his price now increased over 10K, you had talked about this a couple games ago. He was like low nine. So now he got a thousand dollar price increase, basically the same price as like a LeBron James. You're just not going to see a lot of people locking him in. Not that he's going to be crazy low owned, but he's not going to be popular like any means. It's really hard to spend big money on guys against Houston with how the Rockets have played. They get blown out. It's seemingly every game. However, if this game stays competitive and there are multiple scenarios in which I see this game staying competitive, I think Trey Young crushes here. The, the other part about there, you know, not being a ton of really good studs spent up on is that mean, I don't think the opportunity cost is that great. If this game stays close, I think Young crushes here. I think his price tag keeps people down and we know he's got upside and a point I made on the members only video this Atlanta team, while they're better than Houston, this is the same team that lost to Cleveland after they had lost like 10 games in a row. So not going to be surprised at all if Houston's in this game. Not an unwinnable game for Houston, as you put it so eloquently on our members-only video. That's about the best you can do with the Rockets these days. Yeah. Losers to 998 straight games. So saying it's a not unwinnable game is about the best compliment you can give them. Um, man. True. They were playing well, too, before Christian Wood got hurt. Yeah, And I've said this a few times, and I'll say it again. I told, I said in the beginning of the year, Christian Wood is a much better fantasy player than he is real-life player. 
uh, maybe I was just about as wrong as you could be about anything in the world because they fell apart when he left. This is a team that looked like they were in the playoffs. They were currently in the top eight seeds of the West before Christian Wood got hurt. They have not won since. That's crazy that they haven't won since Christian Wood. Um, talking about a guy like earning his contract. If, if you didn't know how, if they didn't know how valuable Wood was before this. I mean, and I was hearing and I was watching a Detroit game like less than last week in there talking about how they like the moves of signing Plumley and Grant, you know, as, as guys Detroit can build around. But on the same token, why would they sign those guys and let Christian Wood go? And I agree with that point. I mean, Wood's got much higher upside than either of those other guys. Hey, it's not like he was on my team, though, and we traded him for three games of Miritich. Yeah, right. Um, but, hey, that team that got him just gave him away for nothing. So It's fair. We still gave him away for not enough. Uh, and I liked him, so it still kind of butt hurts me just a little bit. He would look real good on Milwaukee right now. He's good, man. That yeah, guy could ball. So, uh, good luck today, everybody. Don't forget to click the thumbs up button, and we'll talk some sports betting this afternoon. Thanks, guys.